Okay, the time has come. As we often do on Mondays, it's time for Rich to gloat. Again. Again. Yet again. Yep. I said three weeks ago when F9, the fast saga, was top of the box office, I made an on-air bet that Black Widow would beat it. And she did. The Black Widow smashed previous pandemic era record set just three weeks ago. This is something different. This is a free concert. Dan, you're going to have to explain this one, my, my vanilla Sandman. Why is this in here right now? I, uh, because we added it last minute, I guess. But this was, so, so you're going to have to explain this. This is, what song is this? Okay, so this is, actually, you can't even hear it because we're talking about it. That's okay. So yesterday, I was in a meeting. And it happened to be a church meeting, and we start playing the, the song, the hymn, God of Our Fathers. And I leaned over to the guy next to me, and I said, you know what? This sounds like something that Metallica could do. <laughs> and so I went home after I was done, and I played it on a git fiddle. You played God of Our Fathers? Yeah, <laughs> on the electric guitar. <laughs> added, added a little back to it. So... I don't know. This wasn't the, probably the right spot that you were anticipating. No, it was the right spot. I just had the wrong intro. <laughs> and, and, I was going to say. Rick rolled my hand. I was going to say, speaking of free concerts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I said, that, I said to, that to my buddy after I had told him that. I'm like, it's a good idea, right? A special musical number. <laughs> so maybe you could just do that. Yeah, next, next maybe week. Do that. Say, and now if you all turn to page 47. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I can get up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that'd be great. <laughs> just start banging my head. Well, you uh -huh. know, we can have musical guests here in the studio soon. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's the surest way for me to be released from the things that I do, my volunteer work. <laughs> okay. Well, no one would sleep yeah. at that church. I think it would be right. really cool. I think we, no should update, falling asleep. Yeah. we should update hymns in a rock genre. That's right. Genre. That's Next, all I'm saying. put your shoulder to the wheel. <laughs> that's right. Oh, yeah. I'll, work that one up tonight. I'll work that one up tonight. <laughs> that's right. Push along. <laughs> I think it would be great. <laughs> right. Oh, we're having too much fun. Okay, do you want to talk about Black Widow, Rich? So yeah, sure. Rich. Yeah, let's get back to my gloating uh, Black okay. Widow clip thing right here. Yeah, Black Widow. Do that. Taskmaster, <laughs> a villain who instantaneously learns and mirrors the moves of another, but a move that Taskmaster would love to learn is how to play guitar and mimic the move to the top of the box office heap. With an $80 million bow domestically, F9 dropped an off another 52% or so after two consecutive weeks at number one, adding another 10.9 million second place. Boss Baby 2 is in third with 8.7, Forever Purge is in fourth with 6.7. Cry Place 2 is still in the top five after seven weeks on the board the latest weekend with another three million. Now here's the crazy thing, some equally big and weird news about Black Widow first big. It also made an additional, not counted in that figure, 78 million from 46 international territories, not counting China, bringing its debut weekend to like 158 million. Again, doesn't count China because it hasn't even opened there yet. And that's a huge market. So when you average the critical and office reception scores on Rotten Tomatoes, these scores with the uh, uh, Quiet Place 2 is in 92, is in first place in 92%. Black Widow is in second place with 86%. And those are great numbers too. But Black Widow is very close with those other figures of getting the brass ring of filmmaking. Number one, favorable critical reception. Yep, in this case it was 80%. Favorable audience reception, in this case 92%. That's how we get that 86% there. Then uh, making a lot of money on release in theaters. It did that. And making mo money again when home entertainment release comes around. And it kind of did that already. Some equally weird news about it is it made an additional 60 million from people buying it at home through that premier service of Disney Plus. You can buy it through the premier Disney streaming service. Which is so, what I did. Oh, so you bought so, it at home? Yeah, I bought it and then invited everybody to come over so they could watch it. Yeah. You know, 
So that was 80 million in theaters and 60 million at home. So you're that welcome. Change the whole dynamic of are they going to release things yeah. in the theaters or only at home or both? Ah. They're making a lot of money either way when it's something people want to see. Even ones that you normally think, well, don't you have to see that in a theater, big screen? Yeah. Because that last set piece, Dan, imagine that on a yeah. big screen. It was a it was a great vid it was a great movie. There you, you like go. It? Yeah, I liked it for the most part. It was pretty great. So that's hey. like yeah. 220 million if you count all yeah. that stuff. There are a lot of laughing parts, and I yeah. like laughing. I like laughing too. Dan likes to laugh. Oh. His, his, his <laughs> wife does too. She laughed at it when he played that thing. Well, that's why I don't know if you notice. I'm in a concrete encased room downstairs. That's where Vanilla Sand. Oh, go down there. Your plan? Go down to that room. Rock out now, room. You know, the same thing that attracted the ladies when I was younger now repels, repels. repels them. <laughs> yeah, so it's like go down to your uh, concrete encased room.